Good afternoon. It is Get This Work Wednesday. Y'all know who it is, Kenitra Moselle. I got a very special guest for us today. Give me a second. I'm going to get them in the room. Get them in the room. Let's, let's go. We got a guest today. Y'all know it's Get That Work Wednesday. What? It's Get That Work Wednesday. Hey, give it a second. Give it a second. All right, y'all. So we have a special guest today. This is the Collective 706. It is the Millennial Mogul Network, where we are helping you get clarity on your vision, understand who your mission is for, and execute the mandate on your life with authority like a boss. Period, point blank. That is what we're all about, guys and gals alike. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm out here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, 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 right. So I gave y'all that in intro. Um, and we getting ready to get my sis on. Like to hear it. Here it go. Oh, like to hear it. Oh, here it go. Oh, I'm I'm calm now. Like to hear it. Hear it. Go. Oh, man, we're going to have to turn you. I don't want to turn you. Hey, sis. She's so pretty. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Turn your volume up. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, praise God. Am I standing upright on the... Because <laughs> I'm just trying to walk upright. That's all I know. I mean, is it upright? <laughs> yes, you are upright before before the audience and before him. Praise God. Hallelujah. You so pretty. Oh, you so pretty. I just I like, like you. You look like um you look like you uh on vacation with the tree behind you and everything. I'm here for it. Hey, speak that because I sure need one. Let's take Let's take it. Okay, y'all. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to plan another co-working session and we're going to go to the beach and we'll get us the whole Airbnb house and everybody can bring their vision, mission, and mandate work. And we'll work and then we're like, because you know, we all off. The, I'm, I'm going to go here. Because you know, you got to rest after you build. Because even God rested on this. Did. Okay, y'all. I'm going to quit. All right. Hey, y'all. So, again, this is the Millennial Mobile Network, the Collective 706. And this beautiful lady who is sharing the stage with me today is the wonderful Donna Richardson. She is amazing. We are actually new friends. We met. We met. It was a God thing. Actually, y'all would love this story. <laughs> it's really a God thing. And you just have to know and trust that God literally will put you in position when he tell you to do something at a certain, literally the time of the day he tells you to do it. He is so strategic. So thank you for getting on Donna, a.k.a. Uh, Relatable God. So you know what we're about, helping people with the vision and mission and the mandate. And you have uh, an amazing story. It's so much to tell. We probably ain't got enough time. But if y'all not following her page, I need y'all to already go. Uh, I need y'all to go ahead and follow her page, like her page, because she does these amazing story times talking about like going overseas and stuff. So I'm not going to tell her story because she's here. So she's going to tell her story, right? So what's up, sis? How are you? I am doing great. I just appreciate this opportunity. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. You know I'm churchy. <laughs> but no, I really do. Like you said, it was a God thing. It, even though we just connected recently, it feels like I have known you forever. <laughs> well, totally. So so let's let's talk about let's talk about your your journey. So I learned that you come from a family of lawyers and that you're a lawyer. Can you explain to everybody like the type of lawyer you are and how you arrived to it? Because it doesn't seem like that was where you was going in the first place. <laughs> Oh, it definitely wasn't. So um, both of my parents are attorneys, and I also have an uncle who's a federal judge. So I've been raised around uh, strong, Black, independent business owners my whole life. Um, both of my parents have their own firms. So I, uh, you know, growing up, I always saw the long hours it took, the dedication, the constant 
phone calls and everyone always expecting you to have the answer because you're the lawyer. So you're supposed to know everything. And I just saw the tremendous amount of pressure. And even though my parents handled it so well, I had told myself that the last thing I wanted to be was somebody's lawyer. So it, it just so happened that as I went to, uh, to college, I studied uh, cultural anthropology simply because I love learning about people. I love learning about different cultures. Growing up, we always took trips around different parts of the world. So I just love people. I loved different things, you know. And so I said, okay, well, in college, I guess what I will study is people. And so it was through learning about different people around the world that I learned also that there were a lot of human rights abuses going on. And I was like, I don't want to just learn about it and talk about it. I want to be able to do something about that. And so at the very last minute, I decided to take the um, LSAT, which is the law school ad admission test. And I took it at the very last minute. And I just, you know, I went on and went on and pursued that, even though I was the main person who said I was not going to be an attorney. But I think even in my curiosity to learn about people um, and learn about what they were going through and be able to empathize with them, I really know that God used that and tapped and helped me to tap into that and take it to the next step and actually, you know, be able to advocate on behalf of these people. And so that's why I pursued a career in law. Um, as I said, my focus was on human rights. It was on international law. And uh, fast forward to my practice that I have today, uh, I focus on corporate law. So I work with companies to help ensure that their business practices and their operations are not having adverse impacts on communities and environments. So that's my way of kind of mixing my love for the law, but also making sure I still focus on the human rights aspect of it. And the, the fancy word for that is corporate social responsibility. Um, but again, I just I just think it's in God's will because I know that this is what he has called me to do. That's amazing. I appreciate how you put that 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 terminology on it. Cause you know, I'm a little country out here. She be out here advocating for the people. Period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's right? Nice. right. And so, you know, that's that's amazing because it seems like your your heart was really in the advocacy. And, you know, God kind of put you in the direction where you could make Probably, I mean, does it seem kind of easy to the law? You said you took the Elsa at the last minute and probably smashed it. Like it probably wasn't even there for you to do, because <laughs> I mean, that's but that's been your environment. Like you know, mm -hmm. you that has been your nurture, right? And so sometimes, you know, we don't regard highly enough our experience, our our surrounding, and what we come what we come up in um, as something that God intends to use or a particular a, a specific impact. So the fact that you're, you know, like your your vision. Your vision and your your mission, it kind of it's kind of like the mission might have came first. Like, I want to help these people, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, a good way for me to help them is to do this. So it was like your vision was focused on helping, was on on helping people, you know, which was also your mission. But the path to get there, you know, still came through law, which wasn't, you know, which wasn't your preference, but it was easy right. to boss up in it, right? You know, and, that's that's and, and, that's yeah, you really said it perfectly. The yeah. mission definitely came before the vision because I was told a lot, especially with doing like human rights work. And it, it, it a lot of it, it takes place in the nonprofit space. And all I kept hearing was, you're not going to make money. You're going to be swamped in debt. It's, it's no use. You can't really get a good job out of that. But I just, I, I, did, I wasn't determined to let that, you know, shift me off course. I was like, there's got to be some way. And thank God he gave me the vision on how to do it so that I don't have to, because for a long time I was just working and doing, you know, like reg, what I call regular law work. Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing everything that was in my passion on a volunteer basis in my off time. But, um, but God was able to merge it into a, something that I can do full time through my law firm that he's given me. And, and that just goes to show no one else has to believe in it. But if God tells you to do it, go ahead and do it. Because I could tell you how many people, family included, that were just like, Donna, your parents are already lawyers. You don't have to. You can just go work for them, make great money. And, and truth be told, I could have. But that's not what God had for me to do. So, um, so here we are today. And I'm so glad that I stuck with it. <laughs> That's a good pivot. That's a good pivot right there. We can't skip that, what you just said right there. Because 
Ooh. Okay, so this is what I'm hearing, y'all. Y'all rock with me. So sometimes because it is familiar, you want to lean into that particular like road. That ain't it can be similar, but you don't have to go on the same highway. And so just because oh well, you can just do so and so. I could just do what God told me to do. You know, and we can't we can't get comfortable riding on the coattails of somebody else's purpose in life. We have to walk out, you know, what our individual lane is. So, you know, it doesn't it's it's no shade to mom and dad. You know, and family family is a trip sometimes because family wants you to do a certain thing a certain way because you represent the legacy and the family name, but in the same sense. The legacy of the kingdom is much greater than the family family's name alone. And of course, we know that if you make the kingdom great, of course, he, you know, God is going to take care of us in our different businesses and things. But I think that's a real good, important, important point to 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 stop and pause on because I feel like you know some of the people who who are in our audience, you have a thing like you know what you saw, but it's different from what your what your nurture is saying needs to be the path there. And so we have to contend sometimes with uh, hey sister Marlo, we have to contend sometimes with how to arrive there. How to arrive there. Um yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. Definitely wasn't easy, but you know, um it it had to be e either I was going to listen to God or not. You know, and at the end of the day, even though I spent so much time trying to make it work, just trying to do what he called me to to do on like the back burner on a volunteer basis, that was not the assignment for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, yeah, I do appreciate, you know, the path that he took me to, even though it was difficult, as I said, but that, you know, everybody's walk is going to look, look a little bit different. And that's OK. The yeah. problem was I wasn't OK with my walk looking so different from everybody else's. But once God helped me to get over me, then everything else was smooth sailing. Everybody lift your hands. Say, Lord, deliver me from me. Deliver me from me. <laughs> that, <laughs> sis, you told me right today. That day. Ooh, because please. we just know so much. We just, <laughs> we're so committed. It's like we're committed to a level of comfort. But God deals with us on comfort. Because eventually you will get uncomfortable enough where obedience literally is your only option. However, however, that don't need to be every time. It okay. don't need to be every single time. Now, you out here wasting time. Let's do better. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's a good segue. Okay, because you are an author. So shout out to you. You are the first um, author on this platform. We haven't had any other authors. So shout out to you. Tell us about your book and then speak to your journey to that book. Because I know it was a little thing y'all had to work at. Oh, yeah. Cause on that obedience part. Um, and I was just telling, I was just saying, you know, God had to beat it out of me because I was not being obedient. God had given me the vision for my book. And I kept saying, but God, I got to do this law firm you done told me about. I got to run this. I got to do that. So you know how we always give God excuses for why we can't do what he clearly told us to do? So that was me for a long time. Then the pandemic came, and I had no choice but to sit down and do what he told me to do. So I had already been in the mindset of uh, journaling. I started journaling after my brother passed away. And I would just journal things like dreams that I had because God definitely speaks to me in dreams. Um, and I would just write things that I just believed he was saying. I would write down my prayer requests. I would just write, 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 write. And the reason I would write so much is because that's something that I kind of had to get used to in law school, reading and writing, reading and writing. And so I can, you know, coming out of that, I was just thinking – I in order for me to remember everything God has given to me, I have to write it down. I have to make a record of it. Like I was still kind of in that legal mindset. And so that's what I took to my journaling, even to the point of organizing my dreams and everything. I, I was kind of running it like a, a well-oiled machine. And so eventually I just came up. Well, no, I didn't come up, but God gave me the idea to start writing short stories based off of my journal entries. And this is actually one of my journals I brought. This is the one I'm currently using. And it's just filled with different things, different devotionals. I'm just, again, I'm just writing. And so what I would do, I'm not the best with technology, 
I would come up with a story and then I would email it to myself just to, you know, kind of make it more than just a journal entry. And so I looked in, in the folder where I was keeping all of the stories I had emailed to myself. And I'm like, this is like a lot of content. And so God had been speaking to me about this book. You know, other people had spoken that word over my life. And I was just like, okay, eventually. I mean, I'll get to it when I got time. Truth is, you ain't going to have time. You still need, you need to make time. That, that's the message on the day. Make time. Because you always going to have that excuse, I don't have time. And so really what produced is Relatable God. And it is a series of short stories about how we as believers, as followers, even as those who are kind of questioning their faith altogether, it's the perspective of how we treat God. And through different scenarios, I'm able to illustrate that in a way that makes it connect, in a way that makes it relatable to the person. And that's another takeaway from my law school experience is that when we were learning different, different legal uh, concepts, they would always give us scenarios. Well, what would happen if this were to happen? But then, okay, if that happened, then what would the law be for this? So there's always a rule and then an exception to the rule. But the scenarios, the hypotheticals would help make it relatable so that you could remember. Because you can't just sit down and, and memorize a whole book of laws. Like, that's just impossible. So it was the stories and the scenarios that helped it connect. And that's essentially what I took to Relatable God series of short stories that tell a specific message about how we treat God. So in a nutshell, it all came together, never in a way that I planned, never in a way that I expected. Again, I didn't even know I was writing a book when I was journaling. I'm just thinking I'm keeping track of the, the messages God has given me personally. I never thought it, he would use that for me to, you know, basically minister to different people. But that's where he has me. And I'm so thankful because it has been a beautiful journey. Um, even though my book, you know, because of my disobedience, I didn't get it out on when I was actually supposed to. I did eventually get it out. And so that's why I just want to take this time to encourage you. If you have something that God has put on your heart, baby, you don't need another confirmation. You don't need to wait till the time is right. You don't need to get all these resources. Sometimes we can research stuff to death. Well, how do I start it? Well, what's the process? Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you you know right you you are right um the, the term for that is uh delayed obedience which is still disobedience we out here just rebelling <laughs> right but what i think is amazing about god is it's like he has built in a lifetime contingency plan for every person that's like in the earth. Mm. He got a lot of time. <laughs> like how in the world? But you know, he ain't bound to time, right? <laughs> so mm. that's, that, that is amazing. But there is so much that comes in our obedience, you know? And one of the things that is reoccurring when we do our Get This Work Wednesdays is that it's bigger than us. Oh, yeah. it's bigger than us. And I think that's a really important takeaway when it comes to it. Um, uh, building your baby, whatever you're establishing, whatever your vision, mission, and mandate is for, understanding that it's bigger than you. You're just a vessel. You know, we're just the vessels that God is using to deliver a specific kind of value. And you got to also understand that what you have is valuable. And, you know, when we put the when we put the brakes on doing things that God tells us to do, it's really us devaluing ourselves. Yeah. Like, just because it is the hardest thing. It is one of the hardest things that I think um, we have to push past is understanding how big and amazing and brilliant that we are because we are inside of us. Yeah. It's hard to see your greatness when your greatness is, in you but somebody outside of you say girl you bought you do this you do that you know you be like i do all that because we don't typically see it and so when people boosting you up it's not just because they gas and you poo it's because you cannot see it and so you know we have to be obedient in what god is telling us to do because he's trying to get value to the earth and we are gifts to the earth he put us here for that that is actually why we're here and so we got to align ourselves, you know, with what, um, with what God is telling us to do. So that's what it is. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah.
And it's beautiful. Once you, like we said, once you get over yourself and really just let God have his way. Um, the first <laughs> the first story in um, Relatable God is called um, Down to Ride. Because a lot of times we say, oh, yeah, God, I'm down to ride. Jesus, if I would have been on Calvary, I would have been, you know, gang, gang. I would have had your back. I, it's so easy to say, <laughs> right. It's so easy to say that. But are you really down to ride? Like, we're so quick to say, Jesus, take the wheel. But we don't want to get out the driver's seat. And like, literally, that's the first story in Relatable God is about how we do that. It's an exchange between someone and Jesus, someone that wanted, you know, Jesus to take the wheel, but just won't get out the driver's seat, just won't get out. Um, and so we have to really, once there's so much freedom in just letting him do it his way and in his timing, we think that we're losing out by letting God run things when really we gain so much by doing that. You don't know how much how much less stress I have, how much less anxiety I have now that I know for a fact because of what I've been through and where God has brought me that he's really going to take care of it. He, like I've seen it for myself. So all this, you know, extra worrying and what could go wrong and all these hypotheticals I make up in my own mind, like it's such a weight off not having to deal with that anymore. Not saying life is perfect. I still have disappointments. There's still struggles. However, I'm not adding to it by refusing to let him take the wheel. That's you better preach that. Well, That's good. That's good. I'll 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 share because you talked about this a little bit earlier um, when you were sharing how um, like there was a, a little bit of a tug of war between doing what you do um, with executing your your passion, like your mission as a, like nonprofit structure. Um, and then being concerned about, you know, your LLC, like where we actually making the money. And for my folks who are getting there, you know, your nonprofit is something that's community based. You're giving back. It's not for profit versus your business being what's your income. You know, that's what's making your money. And so I have I have had some recent experiences where God has been putting things on my heart to do um, um, from a nonprofit perspective. And it's just been like, OK, Lord, where this money going to come from? I'm starting to get concerned. I'm telling y'all, no sooner than, than I did my journal, because I'm in a group and we do journaling. So I love that we're talking about journaling. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we did the journaling and it was like, you know, that we give prompts and God, you know, what is it that um that I need to let go of or that's keeping me from doing so-and-so? And it was just, you're afraid about so-and-so. And I've made provision for this and I gave it to you to do. And God just told me, don't worry about the money. This is something that I'm giving you to do. So I'm going to make provision for me make provision for you no sooner than i finished that journal meeting with the folk check my email there was a there was a message from the personnel file that said here go a bonus and the bonus was only a hundred dollars short of what i needed in money so literally god had already taken care of it so i mm -hmm. that thing is real when you're talking about putting your putting energy into your passion and still having your business and and just trusting god to provide 